I love him when I die, he will take me home on high. <laughs> it isn't how you start that thing, it's how you, how you finish. Uh, how, finish? Yes. how you finish? Finish is where it's at. Remember that, uh, that, that movie, Iron Will? He's going up and he's on the, what is that called? The Adirondack? Adirondack, thank you. The Adirondack? <laughs> it wasn't coming to me, thank you. And he got right to the end, and he falls down. And what were, were we all saying? Get up, you lazy bum. No, we were all saying, come on. Come on, it's all in slow motion. Yeah. You know, if he'd have laid there, it would have been a crappy movie. It would have been terrible, but he got up, and he crossed the finish line. He ran, what is it, 100 miles he had to get a ride. Terrible. The wilderness, it's just an awful place, and it's just, he made it, and he did it, and he was just a young man. But that's us. We go through this life, and some of us have had a harder time than others. Some of us have a really crappy time, but everybody in this place has a story. Everybody has a story. I don't care if you're raised in the most loving, uh, no-need place, everybody's got a story. So if we, we can either do it two ways. We can thank God for the place he's brought us to because he's brought us here. Yeah. At this time, through what we've been through, and if it wasn't for what we've been through, we wouldn't be here. I would have never come to Christ if everything was so hunky-dory, everything, you know. But then eternity comes. And I don't know anybody except for Jesus who offers me eternal life. Amen. Some, some religions offer me to come back as a, like a dog or a worm or a bird or something else. Come, come back. I've spent enough time in this place. I want to go play, to where a place which is called the paradise of God. Amen. The paradise of God. Yes. I don't know about you. I imagine God lives in a pretty good spot. Yes. I mean, if I like places and he lives in a place that he likes, it must be, you know, <laughs> better than what I think. So turn with me to Luke 12. And I just want to read a short thing here before we go anywhere else. I don't know, I can't find it yet. <laughs> It was a story about a man, and he was rich, and his land uh, produced so much that he didn't know what to do with all of his stuff. Mm -hmm. So he decided that he was, he says, my soul, I'm going to go ahead and build some more barns, put my stuff in my barns, make sure I have enough for years to come. And then he said, after he got his barns filled and everything was hunky dory, he said, take your ease, oh my soul, because we have enough for years. And it, right at the bottom of the story says, you fool, 
It says, don't you know today your soul will be required of you? Don't you know? He told his soul, soul, take ease. I want you to know, even though you tell your soul everything's hunky-dory and you've got enough forever, the thing you really need is Jesus Christ because he's the only one that offers you anything outside of this realm. Amen. Amen. And everybody I know, there is nobody I know that thinks they just die when they die. You might have been taught that. You might have been drilled into you. But I don't know anybody because the Bible says God has placed eternity in the heart of man. So there's nobody who really believes that. <laughs> Sorry. 16. 12, 16. 12, 16. 12, 16. Yeah, I said 12. Why didn't I see that? 12, 16. Yeah. He spoke a parable. The ground of a certain man yielded plentiful. Da, 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 da. And he says in the 20th verse, in the 19th verse, he says, And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then those will, whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and not as rich toward God and is not rich toward God. So how do we get rich toward God? I don't know. I think that being rich towards God isn't having a bunch of things. Right. Nobody uh, is really honored for what they got right. in this life. It's what they gave. You read book after book after book of people who gave their stuff and gave their all and gave their lives and gave their life to this and to Mother Teresa's and all of those kind of guys. It's not what they got out of life. So the world says, get all you can, it's about me, this is all about me, get all you can while you can, because, you know, you got to get it, otherwise what's going to happen? I don't know, I, I've, been, I've been realizing I need to trust God. Yeah. Yeah. I need to trust God. So go to Habakkuk with me. Habakkuk, Habakkuk. The second chapter. In the second chapter of Habakkuk, right before Habakkuk is Nahum. After it's Zephaniah. So if you get to any of those, it's in the middle. Habakkuk, Habakkuk the first chapter. And here's sort of Habakkuk's, Habakkuk's <laughs> nation is like. It says in the second verse, it says, Oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to seek trouble for plunder and violence are before me? There is strife and contentions arise. Therefore, listen to this, therefore the law is powerless. You can relate with that? Justice never goes forth. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore perverse judgment proceeds. I want you to know our, our uh, judicial system is broken. Yeah. It, it's nobody, if you, you can't see that, you're blind and you've got your hands over your thing. But he says, this is the shape of his country while he was like that. And then he goes on and on. And then he reminds God, down in the 12th through the uh, 17th verse, he reminds God of who he is. God, you're a God who did this. God, you're a God who did that. You are awesome. And then he says at the end of that in 2-1, he says, I will stand my watch, set myself on the rampart, Rampart and watch and see what he will say to me, but I will answer him when I am corrected. Now here's a guy, his circumstances really suck. Circumstances are really bad. But he says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand watch. I'm gonna set myself on the rampart. That means up above everything so he can see everything. He says, I will watch to see what you will say to me. Not only does he have his eyes open, He's got his ears open to what God is going to say to him. And, he, and then he says, and what I will answer when I am corrected. So he understands he needs correction. It's interesting. What, some of us come to God and say, God, beat that guy up. He's in my way. Things are happening. You should change that person. You should change him right away because that person really is bad. Break him dead. <laughs> and he, then he says in the fourth verse of the second chapter, he says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the, but the just shall live by his faith. 
And that word live means to live and breathe. To live and breathe. In fact, it means uh, to enjoy life, to flourish, to live in happiness, to be alive, be animated, recover health, live continuously, to live and breathe. This is not a word that means the just shall survive by faith. The just shall just make it by faith. This is about making it big time. This is, this is about having actual joy. I want you, I want to put, put to death this conjecture that says joy is just an inward quiet thing. The word joy, as it mentions in the Bible, it means jumping around, dancing, shouting, singing, and making merry in your heart. Joy is not, oh, I thank thee, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you. No, that's, that's hope. That's something. But joy, see, joy, joy is a choice. Yes. The Bible never says, when you feel joyful, dance. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And how can somebody rejoice when all hell is breaking loose in their lives? It is called a thing called faith. Yes. It's called a thing called faith. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 10, I'm just going to read that really fast. I mean, I never do take very long to, to uh, preach. So I got the back saying, sure, man, that's what you think. Good thing we don't have those pews in here anymore. Them suckers were hard, man. But 15 minutes in those babies, you had to start moving around. Uh oh, they found you. They found you. I would have done this. Sorry. Sorry. Shh. Did I up? It wasn't Regina, so I ain't going to answer it. The only one to answer things like that is Regina. So. 1 Corinthians 10, 11, it says, Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the age have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. Mm -hmm. Listen, no temptation has overtaken you except as such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond that you are able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. Now, in order to find a way of escape, sometimes you have to look for it. Oh, I'm so weak, Lord. Oh, I'm just, you know, you just fall back into your old crap. He says right here, he says, he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. So the things that you are going through right now, God is there with you. He is willing and quite able to deliver you out of them. Ooh, hallelujah. It's important because these things that Habakkuk was going through are written for our building up and our example. Now watch what Habakkuk did. Go back there. I, I lost it. It's not hard to find because the Bible is only, what, 66 books? Oh, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. <laughs> How, who all here knows all the books of the Bible? You know how I did it? I was I used to have my office in the children's church. And Regina had all these garden little shoe boxes and they all had the names of the the names of the Bible. The Bible, books of the Bible. So I sat there one day and I memorized them. One day, yeah, it's easy. Man, you gotta, you know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hosea, Joel, and Sobadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum. You get them, you get it down. It's kind of like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Ever have a guy ask you the alphabet? A cop? Yeah. yeah. When you're a liquor? <laughs> they ask you to do the alphabet, right? What? So I, I said one time, Z, Y, X, W, B, Q, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, I, H, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. He said, get out of here. <laughs> I don't think I could do it if it's A, B, C, D, E, F. I don't know if I could have done that, but anyway. In Habakkuk. Yeah, it's pretty liquor, yeah. <laughs> he knew it, I knew it, but I said it, and he had to give it, let me go. <laughs> so, in Habakkuk, we just learned that the just shall live by faith, and that is believing God. That all these things... Uh, it says in the 14th verse of the second chapter, it says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In the midst of all this junk that he's talking about, 
He says, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord like the waters cover the sea. How does the water cover the sea? It's all over. You ever been in the ocean? In the middle of the ocean where all you could see is water? It is not the coolest thing. I would never make a good sailor. I like walking places, and then you can't walk anywhere. It's like being on an island. Okay, anyway. It says in the 15th verse, Woe to him, he gives drink to his neighbor, pressing him to the bottle and causing him to get drunk. Do you ever go to somebody and say, Hey, let's go party. Yeah. Let's go party, man. I'm not really not into it. Come on, go party with me, man. I want to party. Come on, party with me. He says, Woe to him who does that. Don't be dragging your friends or anybody else into your crap. <laughs> if you want to go do something stupid, go do it yourself. Don't, don't do that. Anyway, thank you. I got one out of that. <laughs> so, in all the midst of this, Habakkuk again reminds God all the miracles he's done. Right there in the third chapter, he explains to God how cool he is about the Red Sea and the, the plagues and all that stuff. And then we come to the end, and this is a point I want to make. Look what Habakkuk does. He says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, though there be no fruit upon the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Isn't that good? He says, all hell is breaking loose, but I'm just going to get happy. I'm going to start dancing, I'm going to start, how can he do this thing? How can he do that? He can do it because he's met somebody who's bigger than him. He's met the Savior. Paul did the same thing. He went through so much crap, it was ridiculous. Okay? He went through some stuff. In fact, I'm going to read it to you here in a little while. But this guy was just talking about it. Now, in Hebrews, the third chapter. Go ahead. chapter. Now we read in Habakkuk, the just shall live by faith. They'll live and breathe by faith. First Corinthians said, he said that the fig tree shall not blossom, going to join the Lord anyway. And so we've had the examples to build us up in faith. And then we get to Hebrews, the third chapter, in the 19th verse, it says, so we see that they could not enter the promised land because of their unbelief. Okay, now go. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear let, lest any seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they did, which they heard, did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter his rest. Now watch this. Why couldn't they enter the promised land? They're griping and complaining, and they didn't believe God would do it. They probably believed God could do it, but they didn't believe he would. Otherwise, they wouldn't have griped and complained. That's why they wandered around the desert for 40 years. 40 years. Why? Because they were griping about stuff. I found you, I would not do it. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Many hear, but not so many believe. Isn't that right? Yeah. Devils believe the word of God. Okay? But they don't have faith. Whoops. Devils believe the word of God. They tremble, but they don't have faith. Right. Okay? It says in the 4-9, go over there again, we're going to a place. It says, then there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from him. There remains a rest for the people of God. If you are not resting in the Lord today, you can. If you are in turmoil today, on the TV, if you are in turmoil today and you are a Christian, you don't have to be in turmoil. Where was that um, chapter and verse, Pastor, that you in just the fourth, In the fourth chapter of Hebrews, in the tenth, ninth and the tenth verse. And then jump down to 14. It says, seeing then 
that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is I've talked to a lot of people this week, and a lot of people are just beside themselves with fear. Yes. Just absolutely beside themselves with fear. They cannot figure it out. They do not know what to do. And all they can do is see their own situation, their own circumstances. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk saw it. He acknowledged it. But he didn't dwell on his acknowledgement of the circumstances. He changed his focus onto God. And he says, though the fig tree shall not blossom, though there be no grapes upon the vine." Still, my heart is going to rejoice in the Lord and join the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. Yes. So if you want TV or here, we acknowledge the difficulty. Change focus from our circumstances to God. Circumstances change. Mm -hmm. yes. Circumstances change. I want you to know that. Yes. God doesn't. Right. Right. Okay. So we can believe and trust that he brings peace when he trusts in him. Okay. He won't leave you. I wrote down here, who are you going to trust? Who are you going to trust other than God? There's a big question. <coughs> well, I just, you know, I got to I gotta go through this life, and I got to work, and I got to <laughs> do these things. Absolutely. Yeah. But do you trust in that? Holy cats. I don't know about you, but I just have not got it together to live in this world without Jesus. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Huh. Praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> we have this great high priest. We can bring to him. There remains a rest for the people of God. You know that rest is so real. In Psalm 4, 8, it says, I will lay me down and sleep because you alone are my refuge. People say, well, I just can't turn off my mind. I would say, of course, Pucky. <laughs> The way you turn off your mind is change your focus. That's it. How do you go to sleep? Do you go to sleep worrying about stuff? Do you go to sleep going through over and over? What am I going to do about that? What am I going to do about that? Oh my God, is that what I'm going to Shut up! How do you do it? You can't just say shut up unless you replace it with something. You need to replace those crazy thoughts, those things that are going like this, with something else. Myself, it isn't hard for me. I've been doing this for a long time. So I just think about God. You know? I think about the kingdom of God. I think about the trees by the river. I think about the fruit every month. I think about Jesus going to take me home when he comes. When other things come back, you simply give them away and think on something. The Bible says, have this mind in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, take your thoughts into subjection. If it wasn't possible, it wouldn't tell you to do it. Okay. I wrote down here, let me just say this. God is a person. He knows if you're in love with him, it's for real. This is not about some religion. Jesus didn't start a religion. This is about your relationship with the living God. That's what it's about. It's not a religion. God is a person. He knows if you're in love with him or not. And if you are in love with him, you can trust him. Yes. If you don't trust him, he knows it. Yes. So don't try to fake God out. No. <laughs> if you don't trust him, say, I really don't have this together, Lord. But your word no. says to trust you, but so I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, his spirit's in there. Okay? Go to Second Corinthians with me just for a second. These things were written for our admonition, right? Yeah. In the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Just a really, really quick thing. 4.17 it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Did you hear what he just said? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us. Your Afflictions are working for you. Okay? Now listen to 18. Well, we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. 
For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. So he's saying, change your focus from the things you can see to the things you can't see. I can have never seen heaven with my eyeballs, but I've seen it a lot of times in my Holy Ghost imagination. Come on. I've never seen the face of Jesus Christ, but I've seen his face a hundred times, thousand times when I'm trying to go to sleep at night. Yes. I remember when I went to sleep every night with nightmares, every night. Every night. My whole childhood was filled with nightmares, every mm -hmm. night. When I came to Christ, I've had two nightmares since then. One of the nightmares, all I had to do is say Jesus, and the other one I cried out to God and it was gone. Simple as that. You just change your focus. He says, while we do not look at the things that are seen, your circumstances. Now, to put that in perspective, go back to the uh, up to the eleventh chapter of Second Corinthians. Yep, just a few pages to the right. This is really good. <clears throat> we read there in twenty-two, as far as religion goes. He says, "Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I." Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labor is more abundant. In stripes, that means whippings. Beyond measure. Imprisonments more frequent. In deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. He was whipped like Jesus was whipped five times. They said his legs were so bowed from the pain that he was all bully. Now listen to this. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of Gentiles, in perils of city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among brethren, in weariness and toil and sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst, fastings often, in cold and nakedness. These light afflictions... <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Now jump over to the 12th chapter, the 8th verse. It says, Concerning this I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Watch his conclusion. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecution in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I don't know what's coming on this earth, but I might imagine it might be Kenda Harry. So I am preparing you all to know how to do it. Because if you don't prepare now to walk by faith, you won't be able to do it then. Unless you're rejoicing now in the light afflictions you're going through now, just what will happen later when the <coughs> afflictions actually happen. Oh, I just didn't, you know, the turkey was, it was too frozen to, to cook this week. We're crying out loud. See, Paul, the reason he could say these things isn't because he was religious. It's because he met somebody on the road to Damascus. Oh. <laughs> Woo! He's, he, he met someone. Somebody. He met somebody. We should write a song. I bet there's a song about that. Somebody met somebody. Okay. Matthew 11, 28. I'm just going to read that because it's so cool. I know I've read it a thousand times here. 11, 28 says, Come to me, all you who are laboring or heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest to your souls. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Praise the Lord. There it is. You know, you need to surrender to somebody. Yes. You might as well surrender to somebody who will never lie. Yeah. Will never quit you. Never go away. You might as well surrender to that. And you know, if, if you're having a hard time, listen, if you're having a hard time, like with addictions or, or things like that, don't quit. No. Don't quit. That's right. Don't quit. Don't quit. Never give up. Never. Surrender to God. Surrender to God, but don't quit. Don't stop. Shoot, where else were you, you going to go? 
I mean, you got a choice. Here, I, I, I'm just going to go go ahead and go to hell. Huh? Yeah, I decided. Uh, this Christian thing is just too hard. I'm going to forsake Jesus and turn my back on him, and I'm just going to go to hell. What kind of idiot would say that? Nobody would, right? A lot of people living like that. A lot of people living like that. Yeah. This just isn't working for me. See, they, they've never met him. I've tried this. It doesn't work. It, it, it. I've tried this, whatever this is. It's like some people, when they go after a wife, they got to, you know, they got to go to bed with her and, and find out how she kisses and things like that. But, you know, got to try them on first. It's like a pair of shoes, right? You know, but you throw them away. Oh my God, people. What kind of idiotic thing is that? Some people try Jesus. I'm going to try him on and see if he works. If you're going to do that, forget about it. You're trying Jesus. Either go or don't go. Get after or don't get after it. You know, if you're going to serve the devil, serve him. If you're going to serve Christ, serve him. Amen. Don't play. Don't play. It's no game. Praise the Lord. And I'm not talking about behavior modification here. So it's not that what I'm talking about. It's talking about a relationship with a living God who is a person. He hurts. He 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 angers. He 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 has emotions. Hallelujah! He's a person. Uh, what what kind of relationship would I have with my wife if I treated her like some religion? Right. Uh, if I do this and this and this, she'll be fine. <laughs> what? She know that's right. She knows. <laughs> she knows if I love her or not. She knows if I care for her or not. So does everybody around you. They know sooner or later, pretty quickly, if you care for them or not. Yes. They might deceive for a while, but they can't get it for very long. You know? So it's like us and God. You can fake him out. He's not rude. He's not stupid. Woo! Praise the Lord. Did I reread that? In, yeah, I think I did. Okay. The Bible says in Hebrews, it says, Today if you'll hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Don't harden your hearts. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Where else are you going to get that? You have to have your heart. You have to have, no, you got to know you're going to heaven if you're ready to die. you got to know it. I've only known one man who actually believed that, that, that there was no God. 99.9% .9 of the people who say they're atheists are simply anti-theists. They hate God. So, well, my grandmother died. I ain't going to serve a God like that. Right. So they, are, they are atheists. That means no God. They're anti-theists. That means they are against the God. Why? Because he's real. And he failed me. That's what they think. They don't know that, you know, grandma would have went on and, and suffered terribly and, and had whatever. You don't know what the kid was going to do if he died and, and what he was going to go through later on. He was saved. He got saved. You know, whatever. We don't know the plan. God's got a plan. Right. And it's a good plan. And God knows what he's doing. He really does. And I'm going to read something to you. Um, 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 where is that? Where is it about Lazarus? Remember Lazarus and the rich man? Where, where is that? Somebody find that for me. I can't find it here. Lazarus and the rich man. There's a rich guy. He fared sumptuously. And there was a man, a beggar, laid outside of his, yeah. of his gate. And all he wanted to do is get the crumbs, but the dogs ate all the crumbs. And he didn't get any. Finally, he died. And he went into Abraham's bosom. Whatever that is, I don't know. So, and the, the rich man went to Hades. Now, Hades must not have been a really good place because the guy was so thirsty, he says... Father, Father Abraham, mm -hmm. he yelled out, Father Abraham, because he saw him across this big gulf. Could you dip your finger in some water and put it? Abraham, Father Abraham says, no, there's a gulf between me and you. I can't get down there and you can't get over here. He says, well, if that's the truth, can you send somebody to my brothers? Luke 16. Thank you. 20. Okay, you guys are awesome. I thought it was in Luke, but I just did my Okay. Verse 19. Okay. Yeah, let's jump down to this. Um, okay, in 27 he says, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him uh, to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. 
Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. In other words, they have the Bible. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one of them, uh, if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, but one rise from the dead. One has risen from the dead, and they still don't believe. If you have ever read uh, Lee Strobel's Case for Christ, yes. or even watched the movie, yeah. the verdict's in. Jesus Christ is real. He lived a holy life, taught people. He died on a cross. They buried him in a tomb, and he was gone the third day. That's the, on the only choice you have in that, is that did his disciples steal him away, or did he raise from the dead? I'm sorry, that's the only choice you have because it's fact. It is fact that he was here. It's fact that he, there's more proof that Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose from the dead than there is in Washington Cross of Delaware or, or whatever's in the past. Exactly. There's more evidence. I mean, the empirical evidence. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So he says, even though one rises from the dead, they won't believe him. So watch this. Now, do you know 6 million, 60 million people die every year? 60 million people die every year. That's 156,000 people a day. 156,000 people a day. And I wrote down here, who will you trust with your eternal soul? Because who knows? People in this room might not see them next week. Why? Because maybe they passed on. Praise the Lord. <coughs> but all of those people are dying. And we have this opportunity to serve Jesus. It's, listen to me close, and I said this last week and the week before. It's not about us bearing fruit. It's, that's not what it's about. It's about us staying connected to the vine in order for the sap to flow and watch the Holy Spirit work. He says, though I'm weak, then I'm strong. Why? Because I depend on God for everything that happens. If I stay connected to the vine and I'm walking in the spirit all the time, of course I'm going to do the right thing when it arrives. Of course I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus when they come and ask me. And I'm going to say, do you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Ever asked him in your life? Well, no. Do you want to? Yes, of course. Most people, I'm talking 85% of people will say, sure. Yes. Isn't that exciting? Yes. So I'm not trying to guilt you out here. I'm just saying stick with Jesus. Stick close to him. Stay filled with the Spirit. Stay in a place where you are so filled with the Spirit, you start slopping over on everybody else. <laughs> Every time you move, there's something comes out of you. Watch, you're so full. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's good. That is good. So, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come here today. For allowing us to be built up in our faith. For allowing us to see the person of Jesus Christ and how good you are, Jesus. Yes. We are amazed at you every, every day. Yes. Help us this week to stay connected to you, Lord. Yes. And Lord, give us somebody to call this week yes. to encourage them to yes. stay connected. Just, I'm just asking that of you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go to Paul. So, Lord, we are thankful that we get, get to give today. I realize, Lord, that uh, it isn't about us giving. No, it's about what, what you allow us to keep. <laughs> it's all yours. We are not God. It isn't I will have this and I as my family and my stuff and my stuff. Lord, this is yours. So we give back because you've given so much. We love you. We really do. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Woo! That went by fast. Yeah. It did. I got all excited there towards the show and started fast. preaching. Did you know? <laughs> I love you, man. I love you too. My sister brought this. This is, if you don't know what CEF is, it's Child Evangelism Fellowship. They have five day clubs, uh, stuff like that. And these, you bring your used shoes, gently used. 
<laughs> Don't bring the ones you throw away. Bring the ones that are gently used. And what they'll do is they'll take these and sell them by the pound to these people. And then those people will give them to other people yeah. that need shoes. Yes. So it's a win-win. So we idea. get to get rid of our old shoes. Yes. And these guys get money for CEF, Child Evangelism Fellowship, so they can share the gospel with a bunch of kids. And then they go take the shoes out. And while they're giving the shoes away, they preach the gospel to kids. Yeah. Is there a deadline? Yes, there is a deadline. It's in November. So do this quick. Okay. Everyone take off their shoes. <laughs> and if you, if you have these boxes, if you have boxes, you need to bring them back next week. Okay? The Christmas boxes. Wow. If you need one to fill up, I think there's still some empty ones here. Yeah, these are empty. There's five left. That's four. That's four. A little too close for Okay, good deal. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. You got two, honey. Yeah, I'm going to let you. Yeah, come on. Praise the Lord. Oh, I know. All right. Oh, 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 oh. So, why would I give this will be easy. So, bring them back next week and bring your shoes. Okay. I think this is just a wonderful thing. Awesome. Thank you, you very much. Uh, right there. Perfect idea. Yeah, good deal. Right on. Okay. So, CEF is really neat. They, yeah. they just do wonderful things for kids. If you want to know more about them, get on the inline or go down to their office in town. They have an office in town. They're really nice ladies. And they used to be really old. Now they're not quite so old. Maybe it's because I'm older. <laughs> so God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. What date did you say the boxes need to be back? Next week. Next week. Next week. Okay.